I'm Charlie Case. I'm 91, and uh, in uh, 1950, I was uh, drafted, and I w went up to Fort Lewis and uh, was inducted into the Army, and they sent me down to Camp Cook, which is uh, where the 40th Division uh, California National Guard, and I took my basic training at uh, Camp Cook, and it was several months, and when I got done with that, they lo loaded me on a, a sh troop ship, and I went from San Francisco, and I went under the Golden Gate Bridge and headed off for Yokohama. And about several days into the trip, we went through a terrific storm. The waves on the side looked more like mountains rather than waves. <coughs> and a good share of the people were sick and <laughs> smelly. And uh, if you was standing at the table, uh, you, you stood at the table to eat on that ship. And you know, during that storm, if you wanted anything, you didn't have to ask for it. You just wait, waited for it to slide down to you. <laughs> <laughs> and the ship would rear end, aft would uh, come up out of the water, and then when it hit back in the water to jump it up and down for a few times. And I don't know how long that lasted, but it seemed like it was a long time. But pretty soon we got out of it, and uh, we headed off again for Yokohama, and we arrived there. And uh, they had us st scheduled for nine months of training at, uh, in Japan. Anyway, we was at several different places in uh, Japan uh, training, and I don't remember the names of the others. And I took one trip to uh, Tokyo and seen the Diet building and the Emperor's Palace and, and other sites around Tokyo. And after about nine months, it was about the 1st of January, we loaded up on another ship called the Lynx on this one, and, and took off for Korea. And we landed in Incheon, and when we got there, you could see the bullet holes and uh, damage all the buildings there, that uh, most of them had been pretty well shot up. And we got greeted with uh, 20 below under, below zero temperature, which didn't feel very good. <laughs> And so they uh, took us to what they called Tent City for a day or two. And uh, th then we went up to the f front line, which was a 48th parallel. When I got there, the fighting up and down uh, Korea was all done for, and they just ha stayed at the 48th. I think that was 48th. And, and they would patrol back and forth. and. Uh, I think the outfit that was before us lost a few. I think they got careless or something and didn't have a guard out or something. But I don't remember of our outfit in the nine months we was there of having uh, very many casualties. Don't remember of any, but there probably had to be some. But I had it pretty easy there. I was a Jeep driver for the machine gun platoon uh, headquarters of it. And I, there wasn't much place to go there, so I didn't do much driving, and just my, mainly stayed around there. But the ones that had to go up on the line, it was had to be pretty miserable, especially when it was that cold weather. They couldn't have a stove, and, and somebody had to be uh, on guard at night all the time. And uh, but they. Oh, made it all right, I guess. And I took one trip out when it was that cold, and I went through a little stream of water, and my brakes froze up. And boy, I didn't know what to do then. I went out and pounded on the drums, and I think maybe God had something to do with it. Uh, we all started turning after that, and I got back all right. And I was up to the front uh, only only one time that I can remember. And, there was a mortar shell went off 
in the vicinity and kicked rocks around. That's the closest I got to combat. Where did you go to school at? Oh, uh, I went, went, started out at Liberty Grade School. It's a, a little, uh, they had uh, four different schools. They had to have them at them times uh, uh, no more than three miles apart. So mm -hmm. Liberty was on Ferguson Road to start with, and then Pioneer was up uh, towards the uh, west end of it. My mother taught there, uh, Cynthia uh, Millet Chase, and uh, she taught there, I don't know how long, probably not too long, but I guess she fed the kids potato soup and they all liked it. And then over on uh, High Pass Road, they had uh, Union High Union uh, uh, Grade School, and then on down by Territorial, they had uh, Laurel, Laurel Home School. And uh, the uh, I I started school uh, a month uh, late, I guess, and uh, or, and uh, Lee uh, started a year early because Dad and Mom didn't want her walking up that mile by herself. Mm. But uh, we only went two years, and then Dad uh, paid our tuition to Junction City. I don't know how he afforded it because he didn't never did have much money and hmm. we uh, grew up through the depression uh, as kids we didn't really know uh, much about the depression we had lo lots of plenty to eat we canned and uh, provided all our own food except once in a while dad would go in and he had a 50 gallon barrels of ginger snaps, he liked them, and he got them in a wedge of cheese, and that's about all we bought outside. But we had our own chickens, and we raised uh, fryers and had fried chicken, and we had a uh, cow or two, had all the dairy products, and we had big garden and canned uh, enough for the whole year, and we even picked a hundred quarts a year of these little blackberries. And I don't think us kids like that too good. <laughs> but anyway, during the uh, Depression, uh, as kids, we'd do most anything to try to make a, a buck or two. And one of the ways then was uh, trapping skunks. And, uh, <laughs> oh, no. We got, a, you, after you took care of them, you got a, dollar a piece for them, but that's probably like twenty dollars nowadays. And anyway, uh, Martin and Keith, the neighbor, uh, they had a live skunk, and they, one of them had a tail on one side and the other, and I was just a little kid, and I, I was really curious, and I got up there, and as you would know it, I got a little too close, and he reached that foot out, and once they can get that foot on you, they can spew. And he hit me with bo both eyes. And man, that was just like uh, acid in your eyes. And so I uh, went running down to the house, and I suppose I was squalling, I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, it just happened that Dad's uh, three uh, sisters, my aunts from Albany, were, happened to be down there visiting, and they were in the house. So I went running into the house, and I don't remember much about it after that, but they said I came out a lot faster than I went in. <laughs> and I was thinking, boy, what does it take around here with a little boy with acid in his eyes to get a little sympathy? <laughs> what did they do? Just run water on you? Or? I don't remember that. Back then, I think they thought if you bathed in uh, tomato juice, it would do it. Yeah, I've heard I, that. I don't know whether that's what they did. I just can't remember what happened that, sure. on that. But. Anyway, at another time, uh, Martin uh, had caught a skunk, and we had a old Hudson that had a trunk uh, separate from the car, and he threw it in the car, and my older sister was going to high school, and boy, she got madder and hops. She had her reputation to take care of, I guess, and <laughs> that smell never did get out of there as long as we had the car, but I don't think it got into the front much. <laughs> and, uh, 
Anyway, we uh, when we went to Junction, we went to Laurel uh, Grade School, which is right by the funeral parlor. Hmm. And then uh, I think um, my brother Martin and Mayor, Mayor Lou uh, went to Old Washburn High School several years, but I, I, uh, Lee and I went one class there is all we did. And by that time, they had the new high school built. And so we w went to uh, high school there for four years. And Lee, she was uh, early in life. She got to know the Lord, and she uh, felt led to be a missionary. And she, she kept that in mind all the time. And uh, she taught Sunday school up in the PULL club. That's a ladies club uh, that's now the Long Tom Grange Hall. And so uh, she uh, got done with high school. And so she went to Open Bible Standard College right there on 13th and Olive. It's no more longer there now. but. It's over by Churchill now. Mm -hmm. Anyway, she got uh, uh, graduated from there, and then she went down to Biola, the Church of the Open Door. They had a missionary medical course to take be for one year before you went to the missionaries. And while I was in uh, down at Camp Cook, I went down to see her a couple times and, and anyway she uh, got done with that and she went to Liberia hmm. at, uh, around River Sass and while she was there Harold Crossman was with Laterno and he was over there with the heavy equipment and they were clearing places to plant uh, banana trees and so they met and that, uh, there and got acquainted and uh, at the end of their four, uh, four, at least four-year term, she came back home, and so they got married then, and uh, so Lee went to Portland and got her uh, nurse's license, and uh, and then they went back for another uh, four four years. That Harold went went to then, and as a, a preacher, and he he'd gone to Bible school. Uh, School while they were, she was going to uh, uh, nurse, nurse school. school. Yeah. When you went to school, was it a just a one room school? Or one room a... school, yeah. And the school that uh, we went to was the old school, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, they tore that down or burnt down or something, and uh, and they built a new one, and uh, that's what's the dining room of the Long Tom Grange now. Oh. Well, how did one? How many teachers did you have? Just one teacher for Just eight one, grades? Just one teacher, for yeah. For eight grades? Yeah. No, no. Huh. I, th I don't know if I was there yet or not, but there was one, one big boy, he got smart with a teacher and knocked her down. and hmm. She got up and wiped the floor with him. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't try that again. <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, another time, uh, the kids were in the teacher went out to the outhouse, they would do all kinds of things, like put crayons on the stove. They had a big uh, flat top stove, and and it would make a smoke all around. And my sister, she didn't like that, and she went up to take the uh, crayons off of it, and the teacher happened to come in then, and she got blamed for all of it. <laughs> she would no more do that than nothing. The old schools, they used to have corporal punishment, you know, so the kids didn't misbehave as much as what they do now. <laughs> well, back then, the uh, parents could discipline their kids, and they uh, what they heard about it if it was bad enough, and most of them would uh, really lay into them. Yeah. So they, it kept them pretty well uh, in order. Right? Nowadays, you can't do anything with them. Yeah, well, it the old way it worked. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, back in uh, the olden days, you I don't think you even had a lock on the door because you wasn't worried about anybody stealing anything. And, uh, but along comes drugs, and then uh, they'll steal from anybody and to get get another fix. 
Yeah, and mo most of our family was uh, born again Christians, and I go to Bethany Church. Bethel. Bethany uh, Church of Franklin. Oh, at Franklin. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. oh, that's a pretty old church. Yeah. We got a good preacher, and he teaches right out of the Bible. You were evidently raised right around Junction City here then. I, I was born in this house, and the uh, only times I've really been away to stay was uh, the two years in Korea, and then I went down to Los Angeles for a couple of years, and I worked in the Chrysler uh, plant where they put uh, Plymouth and DeSotas together. Of course, nobody knows what a DeSoto is now, I don't think, but I and another guy uh, installed uh, dashboards on it. Hmm. Well, we had to, well, they had one brace in there yeah. out before you could put the panel in. Hmm. But that was kind of interesting, and I come back in, uh, in two years, and we came up through Yosemite National Park. That's a hmm. great uh, deal that God's made. And, but to go back, by, my dad bought this place in uh, 1916, and uh, he uh, had to do a lot of grubbing out, and uh, he he farmed with horses, and uh, in them days, and uh, he he'd first had a place along the Willamette at Albany, but it flooded out all the time, so he he came to this place, and he had to take a horse and a wagon to haul his stuff out, and he, he would make it to the outskirts of Corvallis by uh, night, and then he'd go the rest of the way the next day, and the same th thing coming back. And he uh, married my uh, mother around, and she was a neighbor in uh, about 1923, I think, or somewhere in that time. And, they had uh, four kids, uh, Mary Lou the oldest, and Martin the next, and uh, me, Charlie the next, and uh, Lee the last of them. Dad, uh, along about in the 20s, he had bought, uh, somehow got a stationary thrasher. And he not only thrashed for himself, but uh, anybody else around the neighborhood that wanted it done, and uh, they would make these huge uh, straw stacks that uh, you would see all over then. Most of the people nowadays probably have never seen one, but anyway, he had a, a cook shack that my mother uh, cooked in some, but a lot of the times, wherever they was thrashing, uh, women would put on a big meal, and I think they tried to see who could outdo the other. And, and it was better than a Thanksgiving dinner roll for him. <laughs> and uh, John, my uh, mother's brother, uh, he had a stationary bailer. And uh, Martin and I, when we was real young, we would punch wire. I would punch him, and he would uh, tie him. And uh, they would uh, bail not only hay, that which they would have slips or wagons. They would pull around the fields and get the shocks of hay and uh, put it in the baler and the plunger would go down back and forth and the feeder had to put it in, uh, get it in there before the plunger came back and they lost a fork once in a while. And uh, so we, we went around uh, different fields with him doing that. Then later, Dad got uh, one of the first combines around, and he uh, had an old eight, uh, number eight, uh, McCormick Deering, or National Harvest was called McCormick Deering, back then, and he would do his grain, and uh, it had both, you could cut the, the, the dry grain, uh, dry, wheat and stuff and uh, go through it, or you could uh, have to, he had a pickup that swaths he could pick up and put in. And if it was bound, uh, he'd cut the, the bundles and and uh, put that on a board that would, uh, canvas would run it into the combine. And, 
so that's some of the stuff they did back then. And, 